it wouldn't be David Lynch if we didn't start out weird right on a big old princess face. I should note, I was told the best way to watch Dune is on Spice Melange, which I assume is code for mushrooms, but I don't do mushrooms, so double IPAs will have to do. And what better way to deliver a whole crap ton of exposition than while basking in Virginia Madsen's beauty? You know her as the woman Kenny Loggins stalks while she sleeps? And I think she dies in the end? In this time, the most precious substance in the universe is the Spice Melange, which gives them the ability to fold space. And like, yeah, it's a bunch of information that all makes much more sense after multiple viewings, but you come away with the basics. Spice is important, and much like the flux capacitor makes time travel possible, the Spice Melange makes space travel possible. And I am loving the music. It's epic. It's what? It's Toto? As in Africa? As in Rosanna? As in Weezer covering Africa? Okay, respect, Toto, respect. Even the look of the planets gives you an idea of who the good guys and bad guys are. And then Kaitane, about as imperial and regal as a planet can get. And then there were space bulldogs. Can't really explain it, but I love the way the emperor tosses the cape off. It's so emperor-y, emperor-ish, emperesque. Honestly, the costume design alone makes it worth watching this film. Everything is just so next level out there. Seriously, look how flowy those robes are. Just the flowiest. Should we, should we be watching this? Oh, it's, it's the mouth. To totally the mouth. To be fair, I don't feel truly comfortable looking at any part of it, which makes sense since in the book and the miniseries, Thufer claimed that no one has ever seen them. The creature design in this film is so bonkers and so lynch, weird and creepy. I mean, was his note to the visual effects team Muppets, but would like, STIs? Because if it was, nailed it. We have just folded space from X. What? That's his voice? Wilson's expecting Krang. Also love the choice to have him taking bong hits of spice melange as he's talking to the Emperor. Just pure impudence. Wow, that thing just has dudes following it around to mop up the goo from its tank? Squad goals. Also, these guys give me Dark City vibes, and I'm not mad about it. Remember Dark City? The movie was awesome, not boring. A comment that's in no way relevant to this video. Why would they want the Duke's son killed? Inner monologue, get used to it. I just have this image of my head of Lynch thinking, so wow, what do we do about all this exposition that's done through people's thoughts in the books? And then realize, Eureka, whispery voiceover, come on now, next. I honestly appreciate that they keep reinforcing the family names with the planets. It's a lot to remember up front. Future tech from 80s movies. It's always somehow so close to what we have now, but also way off. Anyway, sick tablet, bro. Dang, this movie came out before I was born, but Peace 2 stopped aging in the 80s. Way to keep it tight, Patrick. Again, Muppets with STIs, unexplained even. What's his deal? No clue. Is he a Mentat? Sure, but he's got more going on there. I'd know the difference. Yes, perhaps he would with that. So obviously Paul will have internal monologue, and I guess the Emperor. But actually, you know, everybody, I think everyone, everyone should have internal dialogue. I'm packing this for the crossing. Well, I sure hope they show the crossing because I am ready to watch Peace 2 shred on whatever that thing is. Mood's a thing for cattle and love play. Definitely wish I had used that as my senior quote instead of shake it like a Polaroid picture, hey ya. Yeah. <sighs> Say lovey. Mood's a thing for cattle. Wait, does he mean moods as in like moo? Like past tense moos for cows? They really don't make films like they used to. These Tars looking shields literally never come up again, but for one brief moment, Picard gets a taste of his future and gets to talk about shields and the slow blade penetrates the shield. Penetrating them. And 37 years later in this moment still looks pretty dang cool. We don't know much about the Fremen. Come on, Al, just ask Ziggy. Okay, okay, sorry. Last reference to outside media. <laughs> Saturation of the blood by the spice melange. So they're putting Tom Brady's feces in their blood? Props to Kyle McLaughlin for actually dodging those arms. Even if they're dulled props, taking one of the tenders wouldn't be fun. So H.R. Giger was involved with the art for Yodorowsky's Dune. But when Lynch was brought on, he was no longer asked to participate. However, this and several other pieces of set design definitely have at the bare minimum a Gigery quality. Gigerish? Gigeresque? Whatever, it looks like his thingies. Must have left a few drawings around. Blink and you'll miss it, Silosan Bull that killed Paul's grandfather. Capitan Leutnant Baron Wolfgang von Wolfhausen coming in with a beautiful beard. Is that a light slash umbrella drone? Taking notes, Jeff? We don't need you in space, we need illumination and rain cover. Also, that hood is incredible, it's furry and fabulous, and I want it. Drone 2. A whole bunch of Benny Gesserits standing in the rain giving me nightmares as intended. I love that the Reverend Mother has no hair down to her eyebrows, and Jessica is just really sticking it to her with the most amazing updo. My greatest student and my greatest disappointment. Oof, teacher burn. Space pug. She's using the voice. Fun fact, the voice in that it can compel people to do things against their will was based on Hitler. Fun, fun, fun fact. And when reading the novel, I never really knew what the voice sounded like, but whatever I imagined, this version is way scarier and I'm into it. 
Put your right hand in the box. What's in the box? Uh oh. Who's in the box? Pain. Oh, well, still better than what Brad got. The itching becomes burning. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Such a classic scene and such a great idea. Pain you can feel that will result in no injury or relief from that pain, which will result in instant death. It's like a trolley problem where you're on the tracks, but you don't know the trolley is a hologram until after it runs over you. And David Lynch does love himself some body horror. Also, I'm getting a real it's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything vibe here. Like get out the vinegar, am I right? The pain! No! Enough! Acting! Oh, but he's not. And he won't die. Tell me he won't die. Hollywood has started attempting to cast actors that are the correct age for character, but in this moment, for a 25-year-old man, Kyle MacLachlan is doing a great whiny 16-year-old. Mother, tell me. Muppets STIs. I like how the computer in the beginning mentioned the red stained lips, but forgot to mention the eyebrows? In the two hour, 16 minute runtime that is Dune, you might be thinking, do we need to see Piter walking down the stairs to this weird green screen room that they forgot to key out? But then you remember what a trip it must have been to work on this movie and how over the top every scene feels. It just feels right. Another fun fact, the face boils were a David Lynch idea because David Lynch. Imagine reading Herbert's original work and thinking, yeah, but Baron Harkonnen could be grosser? Or something about Sting's codpiece, I'm not sure yet. Move, we'll come back to it. Okay, so this is just straight up nightmare stuff. Dancing and oozing turkeys and crap. Vladimir Harkonnen, who encompasses his doom! Kenneth McMillan is chewing, spitting up, and chewing the scenery again, and I love every disgusting minute of it. Seriously, this is like the most terrifying deleted scene from Willy Wonka. It's also the point in the movie where Julia started laughing and asked what she was watching and why I was making her. To which I replied, trust me, you'll thank me when Sting shows up later. But then she realized she spoke too soon anyway. Solid villain building, because no, absolutely not. Everything about all of that was a nope and I don't even have a clue what happened. Space Pug is the secret sauce to this movie. This, this is how they travel through space? Every other movie, somebody just presses a button or pushes a lever. Even in the miniseries, they go a little more literal with the space folding, and that's why this film rules. I can't remember the last time I watched a minute and a half of a film completely silent, wide-eyed, without looking away and having no idea what the film was trying to tell me. My mind is swimming in a pool of clam chowder. I also appreciate that it's a big deal, it's a whole production to fold space, as it should be. And it comes off as way more magic and supernatural than science, which makes sense since everything involving the spice is very religious. Hey, this score is fun and ethereal and yeah, that checks out since Brian Eno, the guy who helped make David Bowie's albums sound the way they do, wrote Prophecy Theme. Super weird how these movies keep using my album covers. <laughs> What a simple way of conveying that Dune is way hotter than the Atreides are used to with the heat hazes they descend. Remember, water is life. Ah, but do not, my friends, become addicted to the water. Basically. <laughs> Gotta love the loyalty. It's like a puppy. You think Gurney and Spacebug are friends? I love that Liette's suit looks properly ravaged by daily use in the harsh climate of Dune, while Leto and Paul look like they just walked out of the Hot Topic dressing room. Urine and feces are processed in the thigh pads. Life can be sustained for weeks. Also genuinely bummed these suits don't exist yet? Jeff, we don't need next day delivery. We need suits that turn our sweat and pee into Gatorade. Ambient temperature, 300 degrees Kelvin. Just so we're all on the same page, that sounds like the surface of the sun, but it's actually just 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. Ambient temperature, 350 degrees Kelvin. Oh, crap. Okay, that's 170 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't wanna stay inside now. My message, it's here. Also a bold move to let us know that Yui is the traitor before anyone else knows. Spotter control. Honestly, love a director cameo. It's also the most, maybe only relatable thing about David Lynch. I mean, why wouldn't you do this? But sire, we can't leave all this spice. Damn the spice. Get out of there. Ethics win. Love that the worm is hidden by the sand in its first introduction. And also, wow, the way that worm destroyed the harvester, you'd think it had a profound hatred of man. So the drone lights follow you around so you don't have to have any wired lights. And they just follow you. On second thought, maybe maybe we don't maybe we don't do this one, Jeff. It could be pure poison, but if you make it look like a Slim Jim, I'm probably gonna eat it. Source, I've eaten Slim Jims. Something is actually trying to kill you right after you dosed. I'd be so freaked out that I was just being paranoid, I'd probably end up dead anyway. Straight up horror movie shot giving me the creeps in the best way. Saving that new creepy lady. Tom Brady's mate, I think? It seems spot on for Leto and his entourage to have an aesthetic that can only be described as Banana Republic dictator chic. Sure, he's a, he's a good guy, but still empire. What? Somebody save Space Pug! Even the Sardaukar are wearing Harkonnen suits that have the green glow inside the masks. Is it too early for the song? Yeah, whatever. Fear's the mind killer and all that. <clears throat> Gurney and Space Pug fight evil together, beating Harkonnen and stopping off the spice melange. 
I do miss the heyday of practical explosions in movies. There's almost an, if it can blow up, we're gonna blow it up vibe to the whole Harkonnen attack. Another completely unexplained action, like with the heart plug kid earlier, that ironically does a lot to explain who the Baron is. I thought in many pleasures with you, it is perhaps better that you die in the innards of a worm. Man, not to be outdone, Grima Wormtongue making sure we cheer when he dies too. <laughs> See what I mean? Shields never come up again. Okay, okay, he does knock this group down pretty well with it. Take it away. Somehow the best delivered line in the movie right there. Win over. There's no need to fight over me. Love the subtle difference of when Paul tries out the voice, he tells the guard to do exactly what he wants, but when Jessica uses it, all she has to do is plant the seed. Something to be said about force versus manipulation. He's going. What does that mean, Peter? Yeah, checks out that he wouldn't understand human emotion. <laughs> I could watch this clip a million times and never get sick of it. It might be the funniest death I've ever seen, and it makes me love this movie more every time I watch it. In fact, yep, pure brilliance. I'm alive, huh? I'm alive! The Baron's alive! Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, are we space folding again? You are dead. I will not stop until I destroy the Emperor. Still feeling the score. I think I need to get into Toto way more. Just stunning hair in this family. Walk without rhythm and we won't attract the worm. I love that detail. Finally a place where old white dads would thrive. As well as Christopher Walken on this. First glimpse of the worm proper and talk about inspiring a bunch of things that came after, not least of which, tremors. And finally a sense of its insane scale. Water, millions of decaliters. Looks like the Fremen have a hookup with green. You know, green? From Quantum of, you don't watch all my videos in order? Oh man, you are missing out on a lot of inside jokes. That song I sang earlier has been in a bunch of videos. We've got a lot going on here, you and I. Tell me you're a David Lynch film without telling me you're a David Lynch film. You race her head messing with some weird box while that dude does whatever he's doing and the Baron flies circles around Fade who's being steamed. Oh, and Ravana's eating some tongue. Sting's workout routine, as well as Sting's yoga routine, probably his dietary routine as well. Turns out Julia didn't care about this scene, so joke's on her. <laughs> For sitting through this movie. Also, Yodorovsky wanted Mick Jagger for Fade, so it's another example of his version sort of spilling over into Lynch's. If you be a reverend mother, let Shai Hulud judge now. That's a lot to ask of Shai Hulud. Do they want that kind of pressure? This is a birthright, an obligation. Okay, sounds like they're into it. Something tells me I can't show this. So it's a, it's a baby being born. Kinda. And it's as lynch as this movie gets. By milking this this smooth little cat's body, you receive your antidote. What is going on? Is this real life? I don't care how many awards Villeneuve's Dune ends up winning. If there isn't a scene where milking a cat is the antidote to poison, it is the lesser Dune. He who can destroy a thing controls a thing. Maybe I misheard, but it kind of sounds like he's saying the destroyers should own the means of destruction. This obelisk is of your hardest stone. Kick it. So at first you're like, oh, it's like a magician setting up his trick. Look, there's kids in the front row. Set fires, suffocate an enemy or burst his organs. And then you're like, there's kids in the front row. And then later you're like, oh, those are Jamis's kids, aren't they? But hey, didn't they all burn in the fire? Oh, UA was looking out. UA left the plan for the weirding modules. Such a classic and iconic shot that's funny when you learn that the giant weapon looking thing on his shoulder is actually just a worm call. Always down for some disgusting practical effects. Let's open this pit up. Yep. <laughs> yes, that is exactly when the electric guitar should kick in. That settles it, I'm getting into Toto. Starting to see why Villeneuve cast Dave Bautista as Raban. Shoot, it's a montage, but I already did the song. Should I, should I do it again? No, no, I shouldn't. See, what's interesting about this shot is, ah, screw it, we're gonna do the song again. Johnny and Paul becoming desert gorillas, and Paul's younger sister is a baby witch. Nah, I'm just, I'm not feeling it this time. In the two standard years that followed. Also, a blown up Spice Harvester's montage is the fastest way to get that blue and blue. I think we can all agree this is the coolest Xavier has ever looked, and he should 100% bring back his desert mullet because it makes Patrick Stewart always a win. <laughs> Hugging with more acting. So is this guy all gooey because he's turning into a guild navigator? Or just more stuff that's Lynchian? Lynchy, Lynchish, Lynchesque? Whatever, maybe he's actually going through spice withdrawal since Paul's messing up the mining and they say there's no cure. Why don't we use this screen tear wipe more? It's nice. Let's be honest, those suits look pretty cool at first, but they are a million times cooler all faded up with that red paint. 
This is actually made pretty clear in the miniseries, so it's a head scratcher that Lynch chose now to be extra cryptic. But whether you like it or not, you gotta respect the filmmaker's choice to just not care that nobody has any idea what's going on. Johnny's got great hair too. If they had a kid named him later, oh. Father, the sleeper has awakened. One more acting win for good measure. But for real, are, are you listening to this score? Can you feel prophecy theme weaseling its way into your soul to make you realize how wrong everyone is about this movie? Okay, look. There's a thing with an open hand in this movie and it could literally all be about this moment after Paul has taken the water of life. I mean, it comes up a lot and a lot. Just when I thought Peace 2 couldn't get any more beautiful. I'm afraid my brother won't be very pleased with you. Well, that settles that. It's not the melting hand or the gas face or even this mug. Alia is the most terrifying part of this movie. My brother is coming with many Fremen warriors. And if you're confused, as you should be, the idea here is that she's two. She's a toddler with the mind of a reverend mother, which is why her voice is so weird. So props for like, sort of stick into some form of continuity? Bunch of badass good guys riding badass worms. You know, despite being a backstabbing, genocidal, power-hungry aristocrat, I appreciate that at least the Emperor is willing to get his hands dirty. In a good kill kind of way. Yeah, darn right you're running from the Sarlacc, but on wheels. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. Does he have two heart plugs or the nipple clamps? But everything about this scene will give me nightmares into old age. Also, come up, come up and, come up and, you done dying? Come up and. Fine, comeuppance. But tell me being swallowed by a gigantic spiky butthole wouldn't be the most horrifically surreal moment of your life. Wait, you guys see that too, right? That's a shot in this film, right? I'm not hallucinating right now, am I? Wait, why is my beer called psilocybe But hey, her hair is red, which is a hint of something that's not actually in this version of the story, so I'm not gonna spoil it. Well, this is a cool way to have, oh my gosh, space bug is alive. Also, Paul's still suit now matches his baby mama's dad suit. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Thufer? Forget your cat milk. You mustn't speak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him. What? Were they just waiting there for a fight to break out? I can't argue with mood drums on cue. <sighs> He's creepy, but that's a pretty good move. Honestly, it's a fun CQC fight that pretty much holds up. Oof, just the sound is brutal. Well, at least now he can finally walk in fields of gold. So oh, maybe not. Paul just chucks out his soul right out of there. One cannot go against the word of God. Well, I bet embracing that God role will go well for you with no hiccups going forward. Have fun. Imagine living your whole life on a desert planet and then getting caught in a thunderstorm. You'd probably have a heart attack. Not gonna lie, the ghost credits are a nice touch. Dune, starring William Hurt, Alec Newman, Saskia Reeves, and James Bond's buddy, Renee Mathis. It does a fantastic job of delivering exposition while keeping the pace light and intriguing the viewer at every turn. And it has more skin than you'd expect from a sci-fi original. What's that? Oh, right. We're not talking about that, Dune. If you were paying attention during the video, you probably noticed how often I brought up the 2000 miniseries, so it's perhaps no surprise that I prefer it. I even rewatched it for this video. It delivers all the same information plus a lot more and is somehow more quickly paced than Lynch's version. It absolutely feels like a TV miniseries. It doesn't have the same cinematic gravitas that we got here. Get out of my mind! I'm not dunking on Lynch's Dune here. I think we all know what it is. Lynch himself is disappointed with it. For such a dynamic filmmaker, this movie is very static. If it were for some of the weird crap that Lynch added that wasn't in the book, like the weirding modules, the disease baron, and heart plugs, it might not have stuck around for as long as it has. Don't get me wrong, the story is terrific. That's why I love the book and the miniseries. But even as someone who knew the story, I was left scratching my head at the end of the movie, even though I, th I think I'd seen it before. Just like Yodorowsky himself said after reveling in how terrible the movie was, there's no way this is truly Lynch's doom. Maybe the extended TV version comes closer, but there are unmistakable studio fingerprints on the theatrical. But look, as I pointed out a hundred times, the video is everything great about Dune, not Dune is a great movie. The film sometimes feels like someone read a high school book report on Dune and based a movie on that. They nail some of the cool stuff, but most of the nuance is gone. And to be fair, Lynch admitted to not having read the book, so I feel like maybe this version of Dune should serve as a warning to directors to maybe read the source material first. Dune is a classic novel that were it written today would have its share of critics calling it environmental propaganda, but for its time, ecological sci-fi was pretty revolutionary, so it made sense to make a revolutionary film. I mean, Yodorovsky planned to change the world with his version, and that's precisely what this film is, someone trying to make a revolutionary 
revolutionary film. Which is something we should want. We need movies where the filmmaker took a big jump and landed flat on their face. That's true for anyone trying to create art. Failure is part of the creative process. So anytime you think your art isn't worth sharing, just say, Silencio Bruno. And even if it's not the filmmaker's fault, it can be necessary for the zeitgeist. If every time the studio vastly interferes, it goes well, they'll stop trusting artists. And art that tests boundaries and goes bizarre places is essential. Art pushes society. It can't just be people in important buildings making laws. A guy once said, there is a connection, hard to explain logically, but easy to feel, between achievement in public life and progress in the arts. The age of Pericles was also the age of Phidias. The age of Lorenzo de Medici was also the age of Leonardo da Vinci. The age of Elizabeth was also the age of Shakespeare. And yeah, David Lynch's or Alan Smithy's Dune is not the sculpture of Heracles, but it's, it's something. And Lynch came back with a fury. I mean, I think the esoteric insanity that is Blue Velvet is a direct result of his mainstream stab failing. I know many people do unironically love this movie, whether it's from nostalgia or so bad it's good territory or gall darn it, they just enjoy it. It's not impossible for me to see why, especially after spending a week and a half with it. Like I said, the score alone burrows into your brain and starts tricking you into feeling crap. But even if it's not my favorite, there is still a bunch of cool, fun, well done and weird stuff in it. It's art. You don't always have to love it, just experience it. I'm excited for Denis Villeneuve's version. I think it's super duper awesome that part one is two and a half hours long. That's a good start. Next week, a newer one that contains water. Things have been so serious here lately. Mother, tell me. Oh, this color does. Father! Why did it leave? Father, the sleeper has... Awakened! Emperor, we come for you! Long live the fighters! The righteous! The pain!